Hi everybody, we're back at VeeamON 2022. We're winding down coverage of theCUBE day two. This is, we've done a lot of VeeamONs. We're at the Aria Hotel. Smaller physical audience, huge hybrid audience, a little different program, great keynotes. Really loved the, the keynotes yesterday and today, kind of product day today. Sean Smith is here with myself and David Nicholson. He's the staff solution architect at VMware. Sean, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Hey Thank guys, time with us. great to be here and uh, great to be in person again. Yeah, it, it sure is. Uh, hoping to see uh, VMworld is no longer VMworld, right? It's, it's uh, VMware, VMware Explore, Explore now. Yep, right. yep. Right, okay, awesome, looking forward to that. Uh, that was one of the first shows we ever did. It's kind of got that same vibe, I hope. I hope you don't lose that, you know, the core of uh, what, what we've been told is it's still going to be, you know, the core of what we do and it's going to be the showcase of VMware. And, which is the ecosystem, great vibe. Y you always know a million people there, which is, which is great yep. fun. How, how's it going at VMware today? I mean, let's start there. It's been a while since we've talked physically with. Yeah, VMware is, you know, we've, we've come through the pandemic, you know, fairly well, relative speaking to what uh, others have done. Um, I'm part of the VCPP program, the VMware Cloud Provider program, and, and I look after, you know, um, cloud service providers, cloud builders, people who are uh, actually building out networks for customers and environments that are very specialized um, and focusing on their needs. And, and VMware is, is you know, forefront with, with cloud service providers these days, doing really well. The last time we were physically proximate to VMware executives, um, I think Pat Gelsinger was still the CEO. Um, Dell still owned yep. uh, the majority of VMware. So that spin happened. So that's, that's good. I think a lot of, I think the ecosystem in particular is probably really happy about that. Yep. Does it have any effect on your world? Um, from a day-to-day -day business perspective, not really, right? Um, you know, obviously we still have a very tight relationship with, with Dell. Um, we still do a lot of innovative solutions and, and products with the Dell team. We have a tight integration there. Um, it really gives us the opportunity to also work with many other vendors as well um, and you know, focus on solutions that our customers are looking for really is, is where VMware is trying to focus. Yeah, it's so. funny, we were at Red Hat Summit last week. IBM Think was right across the street. There was n very little mention, if any. I think they talked about an IBM mainframe at Red Hat Summit, that was it. I mean, IBM fully owns Red Hat, but a lot of people said, you know, we hope that it's going to be like v VMware. <laughs> and you guys have always had that independent culture. Fier so. Fiercely independent. Fiercely yeah. independent, yes. Yeah, it's like when you coach, I don't know, me anyway, when I coach my kids in you know, baseball, I'm a tougher on them than any of the other kids. I think yep. you guys were sometimes tougher on your owner. Yeah. And rightly so. You, ha you have a huge ecosystem. We do. Um, that is, is epic. And so you have to, you have to look out for that. A, VMware's always done that. The VCPP, yep. uh, the V is for VMware, what, what's, what's the acronym? So for? CPP is Cloud Provider Program. Um, it's a program that's specifically aimed at our cloud service providers. Um, there's several solutions within the program which are you know, really focused on helping them build business, uh, helping them go to market, helping them with you know, being able to, for a certain part of it, compete with the hyperscalers. Um, and I support several cloud providers, mostly out of the Northeast, and they're doing really well. You know, they, they're doing well against the, the, the hyperscalers. They, they very often provide solutions that, you know, are not easy to get on a hyperscaler, you know, when you want to have customer interaction and things like that. Um, so the VCP pro program, as I said, is, is really tailored. Um, it has solutions which are very much focused on allowing them to to build their businesses as a cloud service provider. Just, I, just a follow up if I may. Yeah. So the history of VMware Cloud has been really interesting. Uh, at one point, vCloud Air, we, we know what happened there. This is not vCloud Air. This is, this, this is not vCloud right? Air, it's got nothing to do with vCloud Air. It's, it's really a program where we provide solutions that the cloud builders build with, right? So it's software solutions. There's no hardware involved, there's no you know, VMware having the environment, it's, it's really cloud providers building solutions. So it's interesting, Dave, this has come full circle. You used to work at VirtuStream. There was one point Rodney was like, bring it on, AWS. You know, Carl Eschenbach said, ah, we, we can't lose to a bookseller, and all that was just, you know, fun marketing talk for media people like us. 
But the interesting thing is, well, so VMware Cloud on, on AWS, yep. huge success. Uh, VMware Cloud Foundation, yep. doing really well. And, and obviously you've got momentum. Everybody thought, not it's everybody. In, it's in Google, it's in Azure, it's in Oracle. Yeah, yeah, yep. sorry, it's it, in it's IBM. A, yeah, IBM, it's of course, IBM's IBM. yeah, yep. so, number one in IBM, yeah. Yep. And so, uh, a lot of people thought, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people thought, oh, the MSPs, the cloud ser uh, service providers, non-hyperscalers are cooked. Yep. 2010, 2011, the exact opposite happened. It's growing 100%, yeah. like crazy, and we want to understand stand why, but it's come full circle. Yeah, so it, it, it certainly has. I mean, um, you know, the, the, the industry has changed considerably, and especially over the last few years with COVID, I, I will say that the cloud service providers that I support, and by the way, Virtustream was one of them when I, when I first joined uh, VMware, I supported Virtustream. Um, and, you know, they, they have had to adapt their, their businesses. The hyperscalers have, you know, come at them with, with everything that they've got. And honestly, the cloud service providers that I support are phenomenal growth. They're, they're growing, you know, on a par with, with what some of the hyperscalers are doing. So there's definitely a place for cloud service providers. They, they've got great business, they've got great customers, great relationships, and um, it's, you know, it's, as I said, it's growing a, a huge business. So we've, we've talked a lot about Veeam from the perspective of the idea of a super cloud, yep. something that can overlay uh, a variety of on-premises and, and off-premises yep. providers yep. and provide sort of a unified view, unified management methodology. Mm -hmm. um, how much is what at least was formerly known as the SDDC stack, the software yep. defined data center stack, still a part of VMware's vision that is right in line with that from what, what Veeam is doing? Yep. How much of your business is deploying SDDC stacks that are then customized in one way or another? 100% of it. 100% of it, right? right? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, when you when you're talking about having that single view of everything in the cloud provider program, there's a there's a product called VMware Cloud Director, and and it is the multi-tenant view of, you know, the infrastructure and the environment that the cloud providers are building, right? So, VMware Cloud Director has gone through many iterations, and we've we've recently launched Cloud Director Service, which is a, a SaaS offering of the product. But what it actually does is you put it on top of VMC on AWS, you put it on top of GCVE, you put it on top of the cloud service providers, SDDCs, right? All of these are SDDCs underneath. AVS um, in Azure. AVS. And, I was and, associated with that, so yeah. I must have it mentioned. Exactly. Um, <laughs> They're uh, all SDDCs, SDDC. software defined data. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And as well as your on-premise environment, right? So all of these federate together through the VMware Cloud Director and you end up having a single pane of glass across all of those environments. So whether it's running in the hyperscaler, running on your premises, running you know, in a cloud service provider's environment, you have a single view, a, a single interface that you log into and you can see everything that's going on inside your environment. So it really brings that holistic single view of everything to reality. How about from a licensing perspective? So from a licensing I, perspective. I'm an on-premises yeah. customer, I'm running VMware on-prem, I have yep. been. I was at I was at VMworld 2004 and yep. enjoyed BattleBots. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you'll start bringing BattleBots yeah, back. You'll have to. <laughs> and uh, and now I'm dealing with um, with a service provider. Yep. That is uh, you know that is one of the partners that you're working with. How yep. does that licensing work? So so the cloud provider program actually has a slightly different licensing model to what you would have on premises, right? They 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 have a rental model with VMware. It's a it's a paygo model, right? Um, one of the great things about the program is that it's consumption based. So it makes it easy for cloud service providers to build a consumption based business, which is kind of where everything is moving, right? Yeah, sure. So whether you have an on-premise environment that's licensed through what we call perpetual or ELA licensing from a VMware perspective, you can still layer on top that cloud service provider solution VCD, right? And you would obviously have a financial relationship with the cloud service provider, uh, in terms of the environment that you have with them. Um, and they will be able to hook up that environment to your on-premises environment and get that single view. So the licensing is, is not a restriction, right? You can still continue to have your traditional licensed environment in your uh, data center, as well as being able to connect into these seamlessly, right? That's, that's the great thing about it. And that's what VMC, AVS, GCVE, 
the OCVS, the Oracle version, the IBM one, you can bring all of these together and, and really look at it from a holistic perspective. Bring in things like NSXT and, and other solutions like that, Veeam as well, it works seamlessly across all these environments. I am um, talking about SuperCloud. I asked Raghu last year, uh, at, um, it was virtually at VMworld, I kind of explained that concept of hiding the complexity, the abstraction layer, being able to, to hide the underlying primitives and APIs, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it seems like it's evolving. One of the things he said was, yes, but if developers want to go there, we let them. Yep. And that was a key point uh, because you're, you're getting more into that DevOps world. Correct, 100%. And, and, and I would imagine the cloud service providers really oftentimes need yep. for their reasons to get to those underlying primitives and APIs. Yeah. And, and actually VCD is the enabler, right? So, so VCD allows you to provide you know, a container-based service sitting right alongside your IaaS in the same SDDC, right? We, we're not even talking about segregating them out. You can have it inside the exact same SDDC, all linked together, all you know, taking a common security approach to, to what's going on, um, and providing you with that ease of use. So you know, from an uh, end user perspective, the DevOps type of people, VCD is an awesome solution because they can go and fire up a new VM or, or fire up a new container or whatever without having to go through you know, the rigmarole of asking IT for a VM or, or asking somebody's permission. You know, as an organization, you would give your DevOps teams a certain amount of resources. How they use it is up to them, right? Whether they put containers in there, they bring VMs, it, it's all there and it's all in one single solution. You mentioned that um, you, your community is doing very well, growing at, let's call it 35, 40% a year, and it's, it's a market that's quite large worldwide. Yep. It's, a lot of local, you know, regional CSPs, a lot of big country CSPs. Um, and it's, you said- four and a half thousand of them. So- There you go. It's huge, and yeah. Versus four hyperscalers. Yeah, exactly. You include Alibaba. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, they might be individually smaller, but collectively they're larger. Uh, uh, so, but you said that the hyperscalers coming after them with everything they had was a comment that you made. Are customers choosing CSPs over Hyperscalers, if so, when and why? Sometimes they are choosing CSPs mm -hmm. over hyperscalers, but not always. Very often they're choosing CSPs and hyperscalers, mm -hmm. right? And it, it really depends on what their needs are. So historically speaking, it's been uh, you know, everybody rushing to the hyperscalers because you know, that's the flavor of the day. Let's move out of our data center. It's much cheaper to run everything in these hyperscalers. And they do it and then the bill comes in and reality suddenly hits and it's definitely not as cheap as they thought it was going to be, right? So there's many aspects that, that cause uh, tenants to not only rethink that, but also repatriate, right? Repatriation is a big thing for our cloud service providers. Um, things like egress costs. Most cloud service providers have no egress costs, right? They, they encourage movement of, of, of things amongst themselves and, and for their tenants, because that's what they want, right? So egress costs are a huge problem for many um, you know, tenants who come into these environments. And that's sometimes why they would choose a CSP over a hyperscaler. But really, it's, it's more about choosing the right place for your workload. There are workloads that belong in hyperscalers, right? And if you have a solution you know, with a CSP like VCD that allows you not only to, you know, be able to connect your on-premises and the CSP, but also the hyperscalers, and actually have a, a much more holistic solution where you can determine where you want to put stuff and put it in the right place. It's more about that than it is about choosing one over the other, really. Yeah, and sometimes it's more of a business differentiation than a technical one. Is it a hyperscaler or is it a CSP? If you're licensing the SDDC stack and you're running it on IaaS in Amazon. Yep. Or, or in Google, or, or Azure. I, I think the other thing too is, is the CSPs are they're managed. Oftentimes, they're managed service providers, right? Is that true? The relationship, right? And, yeah. and, and that's one of the I mean, things. You know, if if you talk to a cloud service provider, and and yesterday I was I had a session and I was talking to a bunch of people about VMware stuff, and I said to them, you know, how many of you have tried to pick up a phone and talk to somebody at AWS? You know, and there, and there was laughter because the reality is that what AWS does is, you know a kind of one-size-fits-all 
approach, right? There isn't somebody on the end of the phone that you can pick up a, and call. If they have a major outage, that outage is affecting thousands of different customers. And you, one of those thousands, really means nothing to them, right? Whereas a cloud service provider, generally speaking, has a very tight one-on-one -on -one relationship with both from an engineering perspective, right, with, with, the, with their tenants, but also at a higher managerial level. So, you know, they create those relationships, and those relationships often drive these things. It's not always financial. There is a financial component to it, but very often it's the relationship. Have they got somebody that they can talk to? You know, if they're getting many different solutions, can they get all those solutions from one provider? And if they can, you know, it's much easier for them to manage uh, from it. And, and I think so, there's that, there's that managed service. There's also there's a lot of things that, you know, despite their breadth and portfolio that, that the cloud service providers don't support. You know, you, you, you can't do RA Oracle Rack in the cloud, right? But you can. In a, in a service provider. And, and, exactly. And, yep. and Oracle, look, you can negotiate with Oracle so you can get similar pricing in, in AWS, but their this price is 2X. Yep. They're either on-prem or yep. in the Oracle cloud. So I could take my Oracle instance, stick it into a managed service provider, a cloud yep. service provider, yep. do whatever I need to do, and there are, I'm sure, thousands of configurations like that that aren't necessarily identically supported, security edicts that aren't necessarily exactly the same. Yep. So many specials that, that managed service providers say, welcome, to your point, AWS is, mm, as long as it's black, it's good. Yeah, exactly, and, and, and that's the thing, right? Those cloud service providers are doing exactly that. They have Oracle racks in there, they have all sorts of those solutions that are there in their data centers, mm. and proximity is also an issue, right? Very often, the, the, the people who are using those systems need their ancillary things to be close by. They can't be you know, tens or twenties or thirty milliseconds away, they need to be sub-millisecond connectivity. And, and those, those are the areas where the cloud service providers really shine. They, they can offer those solutions um, that, that really enable their tenants to, to get what they want at the end of the day. Again, to your point, you, know, you can negotiate with Oracle, but these cloud service providers do it day in and day out. Yeah, who wants, their business, who wants right? to do that with Oracle anyway? Yeah, Their lawyers exactly. are smarter <laughs> than yours. Um, Veeam, yep. what are you doing with Veeam in, in resilient so, architectures and cyber yeah, recovery? We're, we're a sponsor here uh, at the event and, and Veeam is a, is a great partner with VMware and we're a great partner to them. Um, you know, a lot of cloud service providers actually use Veeam uh, as their primary backup solution for their tenants, right? VMware Cloud Director that I was talking about just now, the thing that gives you a view of everything over the top, Veeam was actually one of the very first vendors to integrate with VCD, and you can use your Veeam environment directly from the screen. You right click and you say, you know, do a backup, and that's as easy as that from a, from a Veeam perspective. So we have a lot of integrations with Veeam. Um, we, we help the cloud service providers, you know, ransomware is a big talking thing around this event, but, but all over the place, right? So a lot of, the, the, the solutions that Veeam brings to the party, these cloud service providers are also deploying um, into their environments to help with ransomware. You know, they, they have so many solutions that help those cloud service providers pr provide a holistic solution. Well, Veeam was basically founded saying, hey, we're going, we're going to better our business on VMware. I first yep. saw Veeam at a, at a VMUG, I think, in Boston. And I was like, who is Veeam? You know, VMware, is that their product? Uh, yeah. it was just so, you guys have a long relationship, even, yeah, even though totally initially fun. VMware was probably saying the same thing. Who the heck are these guys? Well, how do you yeah. like them now? Sean, thanks so much for. Thank you, it's been show. great to be here. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching. Keep it right there. We'll be back shortly. We've got a couple more segments left. Uh, Dave and I are going to wrap up later in the day. You're watching theCUBE at VeeamON 2022. Be right back. <laughs>